What's going on ladies and gentlemen, in today's episode of the simulator series, we are going to be creating the pet egg GUI. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make in this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. So if we hop in eating simulator, we can see exactly what I'm referring to by the pet egg GUI. When we walk up to a pet egg, we can see a GUI pops up, it displays the name of the egg that we're going to open a little description which says hover over a pet to see its chances we can see that when we do hover over a pet it changes the rarity to the actual chance of us getting the pet from this egg of course it displays all the pets that we can obtain from this egg it also displays the price of the egg then we have three buns at the bottom which are also keybinds so t e and r and those represent the triple hatch the auto hatch and then the e of course is the one time hatch when we open an egg we then get an egg opening animation which we will not be creating in this episode we will be focusing solely on this GUI. So hopping directly into studio, the first thing that we want to do is we want to find an egg model. Now, if you have your own model, you can obviously add that directly into your game. I found this random egg model from this user right here, and I just imported that directly into my game. Of course, this is just for showcasing the actual features. I probably wouldn't use this model in my own game. Now we're going to add this into our world, and we're going to compare the size quickly to a normal avatar so that we can easily resize it to how it should look. Now, when I go to resize this, if I just drag it upwards, we see that we only actually make it taller, but we also want to make it wider as well without having to adjust that ourselves. The way that we can actually do this is by holding shift, dragging it up, and we can see the entire model is scaled on all sides, so it looks perfectly scaled. Now, if we compare this to our player, we can see it's pretty much as tall as the player, and that's good enough for us. We just want it to be relatively within the same size so that we can get a good idea of how to scale this GUI properly. Now that we have the egg added, let's go ahead and rename that to basic underscore egg, and we'll also create a folder and we'll rename that to eggs and then we will duplicate this one time move it over a little bit and we're going to rename this from basic egg to rare egg and we'll have two different eggs that we added gui to so that we can see how we can easily create guis for multiple eggs now i'll put both those eggs in the same folder and then what i want to do is i want to add an attachment directly into both those eggs which i'll just duplicate and put into both of them the next thing that we want to do is go into the starter gui create a folder and we'll call this eggs then we're going to add a billboard gui inside side of here. Now, the reason that we're adding the billboard GUI into the starter GUI instead of adding it directly onto the egg models is because we're going to be using text buns or image buns for certain components in this GUI. And for some reason, when you have the billboard GUI parented to somewhere other than the starter GUI, the buttons don't actually work. Now, the next thing that we're going to do with this billboard GUI is change the Dorney property, and we're actually going to set that to the attachment inside of the egg. So now basically what this does is in a way, it kind of parents without actually parenting the billboard or GUI to whatever part we set the Adorni to. Continuing to configure the billboard GUI, we're going to set the always on top to true so that it always displays through the egg and it's not like the egg is blocking it. The distance, we don't want this to be displayed from all the way over here. We want the distance to probably be about 17 so that we have to get pretty close to it for it to actually pop up. We do not want it to reset on spawn, so we're going to set that to false. Then for the size, we want it to be about 8 scaled on the x-axis. And then for the y scale, we want it to be about 10 because we want it to be a little bit taller than it is wide. Now, the reason that we adorned this to an attachment is so that we could easily move the GUI around without having to mess with the offset at all. So if we want to move the GUI up a little bit, we can do that. Then let's select the GUI. And actually, let's just add a frame real quick so that we can easily see how it actually looks. So let's just set this to completely scale the entire size. So now we can actually move around the attachment freely and see how this will look. So if it's too far down, it'll look like the GUI is through the ground. So that's why we want to probably have it up higher than rather than having it down further. And I think that looks pretty good. I don't know. We can change it eventually as we play. It's really simple. You just have to move the attachment and then you'll be all good. Additionally, we're going to rename the billboard GUI from billboard GUI to template. And we're actually going to use this frame. This was just to show you so that you can get a quick, easy look at it. We're actually going to duplicate the frame that we created with the settings. And the reason for that is because the frame has pretty much all the components that the egg hatching frame has. So we have like the title right there, the subtitle and the little container right here. We just have to, of course, change some of those components a little bit. So for the frame, we're going to modify the size and we're going to set the size for the entire higher X axis. And then for the Y, we want it to be about 0.7. So now that looks pretty good. Then inside of the frame, we want to delete the exit button because 
there is no exit button on our GUI. Now for both the frame and the title, we wanna change the background color to a nice little blue. You can copy the exact color from here if you want to, or use your own color. Inside of the title, we are gonna change the text from settings to basic egg or the name of the egg. And then for the subtitle, we are gonna change the text from what it currently is to hover over a pet to see its chance. Now for the container, we wanna modify the background color from this gray to a little bit of a darker blue. And then we wanna delete the container inside of this container frame because that's a scrolling frame and we don't need a scrolling frame for this UI. Then we're gonna add a UI grid layout to the container. And then we also wanna add a text button inside of the container as well. And we are gonna rename that to template. And this is gonna be the template for all of our pets that we're gonna be displaying within the egg. So we're actually gonna set the text to blank for the button. We'll also modify the background color to be the same color as the outside frame. And then we also wanna drag a UI corner in there as well. So we'll just duplicate the one that we already have. Now for the UI grid layout, we're gonna set the cell padding to 0 0.01. So there's a small space in between them. And then once again, 0 0.01 as well for both the X and the Y. We can also duplicate the template a couple of times so we can see how the spacing and the sizing is actually looking. For the size, we're gonna set the X to 0.25 and the Y to 0.3. And then we're gonna wanna set the horizontal alignment to center as well as the vertical alignment. So there we go, they appear directly in the middle. Then what we could do is we can duplicate this so we see how nine pets are displayed. Now we should keep this the maximum amount of pets that we'll ever be able to hatch from one single egg. Otherwise, we're gonna have issues if we wanna display more than nine. And now that we see that nine pets can fit in here looking pretty decently, we're going to delete all the templates except for one. Additionally, you can modify the UI grid layout however you want to. If you're not gonna have nine, maybe you only wanna have three. Do you want them to appear at the center? If not, maybe you want them to appear at the top. You can do something like that, but obviously you can configure this however you want to. Now within the template, we're gonna add a text label and we're gonna rename this to pet name. Then for the text, we are gonna set this to dog. We want the text to be scaled. We want the text color to be white. For the font, we're gonna set this to a Gotham bold, but we can't see it right now. So let's go ahead and set the background color to one. So there we go. For the size, we're gonna set this to 0 0.9, 0 0.2, and then we wanna center this. So for the position, we're gonna set the X anchor to 0.5 and the X position to 0.5 as well. There we go. Now we're gonna duplicate this text label and rename it from pet name to pet rarity. And then for the text here, we're gonna set it to common. And then we wanna adjust the position so that it appears towards the bottom of the GUI. So for the position on the Y, we're gonna set it to 0.8 and we can see it appears perfectly at the bottom. If we check on mobile view, it's still appearing within the GUI. So it's not too far down or anything. And that looks great. The only other thing that we wanna do with this is we wanna change the color from a white to a little bit of a gray, not too dark of gray. I think something like that looks pretty good. Then the final thing that we wanna do is we want to insert a viewport frame. We wanna set the size to 0.6 for the X and 0.5 for the Y. Then for the anchor point, we're just gonna center this entirely. So 0.5, 0.5, and for the position, 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0.5, 0, and that's centered perfectly. And of course, for the border size pixel, we're gonna set that to zero. And most likely, we're gonna set the background transparency to one once we actually start using this. But for right now, just so we can see how this will all be displayed, let's go ahead and leave it not transparent so that we can actually see how the GUI currently looks. And that actually looks pretty perfect for the template. Once again, we could duplicate it nine times, see how it would look with all nine. They all look pretty good. Check the mobile view. They all look perfect in there as well. So that is going great. Now we're pretty much done with the container and the template. We actually just need to adjust the size on this a little bit. So because we need to fit a couple of things below it, we need to make the size of the Y a little bit smaller. So instead of 0.841, we're just gonna set it to 0.6. And now we need to move it up a little bit. So rather than setting the anchor point for the Y, we're gonna set that to zero so that we can just move around with the position. And for the position, we're just gonna set it to 0.1 and that appears perfectly below the subtitle. And that gives us enough room to add the rest of the components. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add the price section. So we're gonna actually duplicate the container and we're going to rename it to price. Then inside of here, we can delete the UI grid layout and the template. Then for the size, we're going to leave the X the same, but for the Y, we want to actually set this to 0.15. For the position, we're going to modify the Y to 0.725 from 0.1. And there we go. Now we might want to round the corners a little bit more so we can increase the UI corner to maybe 0.25. Depends on how you guys like it. Then inside of here, we're going to add a text label, but we could just duplicate the subtitle and add it directly into here because it has most of the properties that we already want anyway. Then rather than calling it subtitle, title, we're just going to call it price. We're going to set the text from whatever it is currently to our money symbol. So there we go. We've got the money symbol space 2.0k. And then for the size, we're going to make it 0.8 for the X and maybe 0.9 for the Y. We'll see how that looks. And for the position, we do want it to appear on the left side of the box, not in the middle if we're making it how they have it. So for the Y, we want to make sure that that is perfectly centered in the Y. And then for the X, we might just want to put that more towards the left a little bit. So we'll set the position.
transition to just zero for the X and the anchor point as well and see how that looks. But of course, for the text, we also have to set the alignment from center in the X alignment to left. And now that appears on the left side, we can check mobile view. It all looks pretty good. It's not appearing out of the box, so that's good. Depending on what you guys want to do, you can modify this a little bit more if you want it to appear in the center or anything like that. Obviously, make your own changes however you want it to look. Now, the final component that we need to make is the buttons. So we're going to duplicate the price frame that we just created. And for the size, we're just going to slightly increase this. So for the Y, instead of 0.15, it's going to be 0.175. So it's slightly larger. And then for the position, instead of 0.725, we want it to be a 0.9. So it's at the edge of the UI and it's actually appearing a little bit off of it. Then we also want to rename this from price to buttons. And then of course, we want to set the background transparency to one because we don't want there to be any background to this. Inside of the frame, we can also delete the UI corner and the text label as well. And then we are going to insert a text button. Now the first text button is going to be times three, and we're just going to name it by the action. So remember on the left side, we have the times three. Then in the middle, we have the times one. And on the right, we have auto. So we're going to say times three. Now we're actually not going to have any text here because we're going to make a text label inside of it. So for the size, we want it to be kind of small and definitely smaller than the one in the middle. So we're going to say 0.275 one because we want it to be the entire height. Now for the background color, we want it to be a little light green. So that looks good. And now actually we want to add a UI corner to this. So we're going to throw that directly into there and we want to make it a little bit more curved. So we'll maybe set this to like 0.25. And I think that actually looks good. Then inside of here, we'll add a text label. But once again, I'm just going to duplicate the subtitle, throw it directly into here. And we're going to call this key as this is going to be the top text, which is going to be the key. The player has to press to automatically activate this. They can also click on the button as well, but they have the keys here too. So that's what we're going to also do. And then for the text, we're going to say T as that's what the key bind is for this. Now for the size, we want this to stretch the entire X axis and about half of the Y axis. So one and 0.5, and that looks decent. Then for the position, we could just set this to zero, zero as it's just going to appear directly at the top. And that looks good. We'll then duplicate this and rename this from key to maybe effect as that's what times three will be. If you think of a better name to name it, you definitely can do that as well. I don't think we're really going to be scripting with this, so it shouldn't really matter. Now the text for this is going to be times three. And then I think they have a little bit of a different font. So instead of Gotham black, so it's not as bold, we're just going to use Gotham. And for the position, we want it to be at the bottom. So we're going to set it to point five because remember the Y is already point five and that looks perfect. Then we're going to close that button since we're done with it. And then we're actually going to add in a UI list layout. And this is going to help us easily position all three of our buttons. So the spacing is the exact same in between each of them. So let's go ahead and duplicate this three times just so I can show you what I mean. Now that we have three of them inside of there, we're going to set the fill direction to horizontal so that it fills to the right instead of filling down. The horizontal alignment, we want it to be center. And then also for the vertical alignment, we want that to be center as well, although that shouldn't really have an effect on this. And then we can adjust the padding to make there be a little bit of a space in between them. So 0.1, that seems pretty big. So maybe like 0.075, that's a little bit smaller. Maybe 0.05, I think that's good spacing between all of them. And now we have a sort order in here and we're doing this by the layout order or the name. We're gonna choose layout order and we're gonna say this is gonna appear all the way on the left side. So we don't have to modify the layout order for this one, but let's go ahead and rename this one to times one. And we wanna make sure that appears in the middle. So let's adjust the layout order to one so that we can make sure that that appears after the times three. And then the final one, which is currently in the middle, because the layout order hasn't been changed, we're going to rename that from times three to auto. And then for the layout order, we want this to appear all the way on the right. So we're going to set that to two. And of course, two is higher than one. So that's why it appears on the right. One is higher than zero. That's why that appears in the middle. So let's go into the times one and we're going to adjust the effect from times three to just times one. And the key is no longer gonna be T, it's gonna be E. And we can do the same thing for auto. So the effect for auto is gonna be auto and the key is gonna be R. The last thing that we need to do is make the center one a little bit taller than both the left and the right ones. So let's go ahead and do that. So all we have to do is change the height and we're also gonna change the width a little bit so that it kind of scales nicely. If we just change the height, I'll actually show you. Let's change this from one to 1.115. And that actually looks pretty good. So I think leaving it like that looks good. If you guys wanna change any of the sizing or anything like that, you guys can certainly do that to your preference. This is just a quick little guide to show you how we can actually create the tutorial so that we can move on and start scripting it. Let's go ahead and start up our game and check it out to see how it looks in game. Maybe we want to make some adjustments and oh, I actually forgot to anchor this egg. So it's going to be moving around and looking a little weird, but now that it's standing still, I think the GUI looks pretty good. If we hover over the buttons, we can see that we can actually click them. The same goes for this pet as well. So we're going to be using those button effects to actually do certain things and perform the different actions. But yeah, if we walk away, we can see that the GUI closes. If if we get closer, we can see that it opens up and everything like that. So I think the GUI is pretty much finished. So that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we're actually going to start scripting and adding the ability to open and hatch pets from the edge.
eggs. As always, smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified and we'll upload more Roblox development content. Of course, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.